Dr. Issing is from Germany. He is one of the founding forces of the Euro and the founding forces of the European uh, Central Bank. In more than anything, he has a collective understanding and history of his uh, Germany. He joins us now from Centra. Dr. Issing, there is immense turmoil in your Germany. We see it between a threatened Angela Merkel and Bavaria over immigration. What would Conrad Adenauer do? What, what can Merkel in these debates of Germany learn from the past leaders of Germany? Uh, oh, I think there was no comparable event uh, which could be a kind of benchmark for Chancellor Merkel to learn. But I think she had to learn that it was one thing to decide to open the doors in uh, 2015 for the immigrants and then uh, to meet the challenges which are connected with such a flood of uh, immigrants. And uh, Germany is still uh, suffering from that. There are many schools in which the percentage of foreign uh, pupils not speaking Germany is very high. It has dramatic consequences for the school system. Uh, for the education system, in general, for um, the uh, immigration policy. <clears throat> and uh, so to say, it comes now with a time lag, like, uh, all the problems at once, and some violence, uh, which was more or less unavoidable, uh, makes it even uh, more clear and leads uh, to a kind of emotional uproar in the German, uh, right. with the German people. Dr. Ersing, you and I spoke once in Dubai about your childhood in the debris of World War II and Hitler. And then we move on to your Hayek lecture, which I can't believe was 20 years ago <laughs> now. What does Germany need to learn about this linkage of po uh, populism in a strident political debate with a better economy? How does Germany adapt to this new populism? Oh, it's quite interesting that you go back 20 years, and I should go back even even longer. Uh, but we see populism not only emerging in Germany, uh, but this is, has become a global phenomenon. But uh, Germany, with its past, it's very exposed to dangers of uh, populism. Uh, I think so far there is no threat for democracy, uh, but we have to be very careful, and populists uh, uh, have to be taken serious, and one should argue with them. Uh, not ignore them anymore. Uh, they are too strong for that. Uh, but uh, a good economic performance so far uh, works like uh, medicine calming the people. But in case we would have a recession, unemployment would rise. Uh, I think uh, populism uh, will have a new chance. Now it's just exploiting the immigration issue. What are the chances, uh, Professor Ising, that uh, the U.S. starts a recession um, or that Europe starts a recession in the next two to three years? I think any recession, any uh, recovery comes to an end. In the past, there was a saying uh, in the U.S., uh, no recovery uh, died by itself. It was killed by the Fed, which means tightening monetary policy. But uh, the slow f pay phase of uh, tightening or less easing monetary policy, I think, uh, conducted by the Fed was very appropriate. And on the other side, we have a strong fiscal stimulus. So overall, I think there is, uh, on balance, still a stimulation for an already very strong economy. How long this can last, uh, we will have to see. Okay, is there a danger, Mr. Racing, that actually the ECB is so far behind in the global cycle that it will still have loose policy when a recession hits the U.S. and therefore it won't have enough tools to deal with it? Yeah, this is, uh, let's see, it's, it, it, this is a risk. Uh, but if you say the, this recession in the U.S., if it comes at all, uh, in a rather short period of time. It's still through two, two three years away. So the ECB has uh, still uh, a long time to uh, prepare for this moment. And I think the decision last week uh, to uh, announce the end of uh, quantitative easing uh, was highly overdue. Dr. Rissing, if we could turn to Mario Draghi and the stunning headline last week that he will basically delay 
an interest rate rise for at least 12 months, maybe even 14 months. I don't believe that's in the Ising ECB playbook. Is this a new policy? Is this a new creative solution to the monetary economics of now? Do you support the idea of a verbal delay of 14 months? Uh, um, the, the Ising's playbook, as you call it, uh, was a kind of uh, general textbook monetary policy, and it was conducting uh, at, with all central banks uh, until the great uh, recession started, uh, financial crisis of 2008. Since we have a different uh, game, and uh, monetary policy is playing according to a different. Uh, playbook. Uh, I think this is appropriate, uh, but uh, this is now long ago, and uh, one can dispute if the euro uh, economies, euro area economy, still needs stimulus. Uh, but the question is, does it need such a strong stimulus, which is more expansionary than at the mm -hmm. peak of the crisis? I, would, I guess we should all congratulate you on a 116 euro at the setting back 20 plus years ago. Is the euro fairly valued now? I mean, is 116 where it should stay forever? Uh, I'm not any more a central banker, but I still keep to the advice, never predict, uh, make a comment on the level of exchange rates. Uh, <clears throat> this is the greatest risk for the reputation of any person. Uh, we heard from Paul Krugman, we heard from Larry Summers uh, casting doubt on the global economy. Mr. Racing, uh, they say also that uh, the market was complacent in this uh, tit-for-tat uh, trade war between the U.S. and China. Are they right? Uh, I, I don't think that anybody is complacent about this risk. This is the biggest risk not only uh, for the global economy and individual countries and Germany, uh, is extremely exposed uh, to higher tariffs, for example, on uh, cars, uh, higher uh, tariffs uh, set by the U.S. Uh, but uh, in the end, there will be only losers if we embark really on a trade war. Uh, and it can still be prevented, uh, <coughs> but uh, um, the situation is worsening almost every day. Okay, so what do you think economists or economics are getting wrong in Germany, but also on the world stage? Pardon me, I didn't get it. I was asking you what economists get wrong, what they misunderstand about the economy today. No, I don't see that. Uh, I think the understanding is uh, more or less uniform, and I, I think it's correct. It's more discussion uh, with which measures one should react to the recovery in the economy, to the threat of potentially uh, higher inflation in the future, how to far to stimulate the economy. Uh, I think uh, there's more uh, basic common understanding uh, than before. All right, thank you so much, Altmer Ising, the, the former ECB chief economist.